Hey, Rose, want to grab a drink? Your happiest hour of the week starts now. Sit back, relax, and enjoy because Because the the drinks drinks are are on us. us. (laughs) Welcome back to Drinks on Us. I'm Riley. And I'm Rose. We are so happy you joined us for happy hour. Gosh, I feel a lot lighter doing this episode. Obviously not physically, just figuratively. (laughs) I'm so freaking excited for this episode. Like, how are we going to talk about anything else? Can we just talk about you the whole time? No, no. I want to do our regular banter, sip and spill, what's in our car, girls room. The girls need us. The do crew needs us. You're right. The do crew needs us, but I'm just so excited to talk with you and chat. And like you said, you can finally be open and just like get everything out. Oh, yeah. So if you guys are like, what the heck are they talking about? (laughs) I officially announced on Instagram that my husband and I are expecting our first child. I'm pregnant. I, I don't know. Is the right way to say it? We're pregnant or I'm pregnant? I feel like either or, as long okay. as the husband isn't saying I'm pregnant. <laughs> right? <laughs> that would definitely be a red flag. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yes, it's so exciting. I I guess kind of posting has made it feel a little bit more real, but still not fully for me. I'm still grasping it so I can imagine how everybody else feels. Like hearing you say just now, I'm pregnant... I- I'm still in shock. Like it is the craziest thing. I'm so freaking excited. And like, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good. Um, Time is flying. It feels great to obviously have it out in the world. Obviously friends and family have known for quite some time. And it's kind of nerve wracking yet exciting to like share it with Mm -hmm. the world or social media. Um, But I'll get into more of like how I'm feeling in the nitty gritty, how far along I am and all that in the main segment. You guys submitted so many great questions. So I try to consolidate them and Rai is going to be like the the broadcaster for it and also give your two cents and your experience as best friend on like seeing it through your eyes. Totally. I feel like I have so many questions for you too. So we're all going to be hearing from you together. Yeah, I can't wait. Um, So obviously, just like as a prerequisite, is that the right word? I texted you that the other day. Is that the right saying? Yeah. (laughs) Okay. It just makes me think of school. So it sounds wrong. Uh, Um, This won't be like pregnancy is not going to be the only thing we talk about moving forward. I know that doesn't interest everybody. Just this episode specifically is dedicated to some questions and obviously... Some of my updates and cart and things of that nature are just going to obviously have to do with pregnancy here and there because that is a big part of my life now. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to chat about what you did this weekend. Um, You've got to share your big news about your bun in the oven. Oh, wait, that actually... (laughs) Wait, what? (laughs) That came out (laughs) so misleading, you guys, I promise. Riley is not pregnant. I meant she made a turkey this weekend. <laughs> Wait, do you know something that I don't know? <laughs> I, you ever, have to be found in the <laughs> oven, not me. <laughs> I think I just get all my sayings confused. Riley made a turkey this weekend, you guys. <laughs> oh my gosh. I did not know what you were, where oh. you were going with that, what you were saying. But yes, we did a practice Thanksgiving turkey and it turned out so good. It took like a million hours to cook. We literally ate dinner at nine o'clock at night. We expected it to be done at like 637, but it was so worth it. It was really good. Proud that we like tested it. I didn't do anything actually. All credit goes oh, to Cade. Really? He made it on wow. his smoker. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah. So we're have we're doing um, Thanksgiving at my family's house on Thursday. And then we're hosting Cade's family that weekend. And so like we're in a new house. We've never hosted that many people. We've never made a Thanksgiving dinner. So like me, I'm so type A and panicked. I'm like, Kate, you have to practice making the turkey. So that was we smart. Did. That was really smart. Do you have now, so much leftovers? Yeah, we have a lot of leftovers. We're going to be eating like turkey sandwiches all week. Yeah. Um, but now we know we need to put it on like five hours earlier. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's so funny <laughs> because last week we were talking about how you got a new oven and what a better way to really get your oven going than making a turkey. Your house must yeah. smell amazing too. But he didn't do it in the oven. He did it on a oh, smoker. Oh, <laughs> you're right. So where where's the smoker outside? Yeah, it's outside. We have like a makeshift patio right now until we get our deck. But um, 
Yeah. So that was pretty much the highlight of my weekend. We didn't do too much. We were supposed to go visit um, our family in Cincinnati, but that trip ended up having to get pushed back a couple of weekends. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of a chill and low-key weekend. That's so nice. Um, I'd like to hear anything else you'd want to share about your weekend. However, I re- just remembered I forgot to ask what's in your cup. <laughs> it's okay. I, I'm a little out of sorts today. The the <laughs> cat's out of the bag or whatever. I don't know. All my sayings are just falling out of my mouth. Wait, now you can totally use the saying pregnancy brain. Oh, it's so real. I hate Is to it? admit it, but it's so real. Really? It's not just an excuse? No, right. It's the craziest thing. I've never felt like my type A brain is leaving me. Like I want to be type A, but randomly something will happen or I'll be having a conversation or I'll do something and be like, oh my gosh, that is not like me at all. It's That's so weird. so crazy. I hate it. I Aww. hate it. Well, yeah. hopefully it doesn't continue on after. Oh, I think it only gets worse from here. Really? Well, I mean, after like you give birth. Well, I think then it becomes mom brain. Oh yeah, you're right. That's what you so. It's, it's over for me, guys. I already get my sayings mixed up when I'm sharp as a nail. So, oh my gosh. Well, I actually have a story about my cup specifically. Okay. This Cute. glass is what Rose gave me when she told me she was pregnant. And so every time I like look at it and use it, it's so special because it reminds me of that memory. I was shocked beyond words. I think we'll share the video, right? <laughs> Yeah, we'll share the video. Everyone wants the video more than anything. We'll post it at some point this week on the Drinks On Us Instagram and TikTok. So be sure to follow. Follow us. And basically what happened was Rose said, I have to send you something in the mail. It's like super do coded and I want you to open it on the pod. I had zero inkling that it would be what it was. I was like, oh, cute. We're spicing up the pod. I'm going to open a gift. Like I was like, I feel so bad. She bought me something. (laughs) So... Like I had no idea you guys. So when you see the video, you'll just see the shock on my face. But what was in it was also this cutie little glass with cherries on it for the Duke crew. And tonight I'm drinking cherry lime poppy. So am I in my cherry cup. Wait, are you serious? I swear to God. Look. Wait. Okay. Virtual cheers. You think we can clink? Oh, wrong way. In the screen. Clink. (laughs) I went, um, I found some like, Mascarpone cherries. So I added them. Mm-hmm. Mer- are they, what are they called? Is that not right? Mascarpone. Why does that remind <laughs> me of Al Capone? <laughs> What's maraschino? Oh, I think. <laughs> is, is that what you're saying? <laughs> I think I'm saying that. That's what I meant to say. You know, I the artificial like mars- ones full of red I like 40. Mascarpone better. Okay, we'll we'll change it to Mascarpone. Um, I made something really fun that I thought I was going to drink for Happy Hour Club on Do Crew or on Drinks on Us, but I realized it had thirty five. Doc Pop has thirty five uh, grams of milligrams of caffeine. Did you know? Really? No, I didn't. And I notice I'm more sensitive. Obviously, I'm limiting my caffeine, but I'm more sensitive to it as well. And since we film at night, I didn't want to risk it for the biscuit. So I made it and then I just gave it to Ryan before he started filming. But you'll see it on Happy Hour Club. Well, since I already told you about my weekend, it was so boring. I want to hear about yours. What'd you do? Your weekend was not boring. I love a weekend (laughs) at home, especially cooking. You're just such a cook these days. I did Um, cook a lot. My weekend was so fun. Ryan surprised me and shipped my favorite local Louisville cookies for my birthday. My birthday is this week. So once it airs, our episode airs on Wednesday, Thursday is my birthday, but I'm going out of town this weekend to celebrate my sister's second baby. It's all babies um, in my life right now. But last weekend or, you know, the weekend that I'm sharing right now, we did kind of like a weekend celebration because my birthday falls on a weekday. And so we just did a lot of my favorite things. We went, um, we went on a walk downtown. We went to one of my favorite brunch spots. We had sourdough pizzas for dinner. Uh, we had cookies all weekend long. We decorated for Christmas. So I wanted to share with you guys, you guys know I am a Christmas fiend. And normally, I think I shared last week, normally we decorate on my birthday. Well, because we're not in our house and the odds of us being in our house is probably hopefully a week or a couple weeks before Christmas, 
that's not enough time for me to enjoy my Christmas decor. And it's, no. it wouldn't be to the full extent. So we went over to our storage unit and grabbed our Christmas tree and like one box of decor. And we're like, okay, whatever's in here, we'll make work. And it has sparked so much joy because you know me, I'm obsessed with Christmas, all things. And yeah, so we just did a lot of my favorite things, early birthday celebration. And I just have to say, in my opinion, everyone mm-hmm. should be decorating for Christmas soon. And I see this funny, real, like meme tweet thing going around saying, just an FYI, your turkey tastes just as good with a Christmas tree up. <laughs> <laughs> that, I feel triggered. That feels directed at me. Honestly. <laughs> that is. Okay. But a lot of people are like weekend after Thanksgiving, we're setting up for Christmas. And I think that's where you usually fall. That will be me. I maybe would have done it earlier if we weren't hosting a bunch of people the Saturday Mm -hmm. after Thanksgiving. I just like, I feel like having that many people in the house and it takes a while to get your decor perfect. I'm like, I don't need to add another stressor Mm -hmm. to my life. So probably that Sunday after Thanksgiving, I'm going full blown Christmas. And you're, you like sent a video to us of your Christmas decor Mm -hmm. and it is I felt so much joy just looking at it. So imagining like living there, it's so cozy. It really does spark so much joy. It does. And it's just like a little space and, you know, it may not be like full out, but even a tree, just having a tree up, even if you can't decorate it, just the lights on a tree does something. But I totally understand. I didn't realize you were hosting, which I wanted to chat a little bit more about. Are you doing like a fun theme? Are you... Are you in charge of cooking everything? <laughs> Basically, yeah. So what? I, yeah. So we're Kate and I are doing the turkey, mashed potatoes, sweet potato casserole, and veggie, and I'll have like appetizers and desserts. And then his dad is bringing stuffing. I think his aunt and uncle are bringing an appetizer. Oh, wow. His grandma's and, bringing a pie. Oh, there's wow. a lot of people. I thought it yeah. was just his parents and uh, Shane. That's kind of what I thought it was going to be. And then it kind of snowballed into extended family. And it's like, I'm so excited. I love hosting. I just hope we can fit everyone in the house. It kind of stinks that it's cold and like, we can't really be outside. Um, But I think it'll work out. I have always wanted to host a Thanksgiving. So despite you maybe being stressed out and it being your first, you kind of got to rip the bandaid off and just learn yeah. from this time. But I feel like you're going to make such a pretty tablescape. How are you doing a tablescape? Because your room over there is so perfect to make a cute layout. Yeah. I've been envisioning some things. I need to look at more inspo, but I think we need to add a folding table onto our current table to make enough seats for everyone. Like I want to do a long table where everyone can sit together Mm -hmm. and obviously make it look pretty with tablecloths and a tablescape, like you said. So, um, yeah, a little stressed about that, but we'll make it happen. It's going to be that weekend's going to be amazing because you're going to get to go home and see your family, then Mm -hmm. host and then go Christmas. I mean, does it get better than that? And then once it's like Christmas time, work doesn't seem all that bad because it's like you have a Christmas decor around you. You're blasting Christmas music all day. You're Christmas shopping for your loved ones. It's like everyone's in such a good mood. And then we're off for Christmas and it's like, then it's New Year's. So I feel like after Thanksgiving, nothing really seems that serious anymore. It's just like fun times for everyone. Not until Jan 1. Like it's just a blur. I think Jan 1, we hit rock bottom. Anything goes that month. Yeah. I agree. And your birthday falls in that month. And yes. I told Riley today, Ryan hung up balloons this weekend and he really blasted how old I'm turning in my <laughs> face. <laughs> he did big blow up balloons and I saw <laughs> two nine and I don't know, something about that number kind of gave me the heaps. Why do I still feel like we're like 21? No, I know. I felt like I was announcing teen pregnancy. like this is so crazy that we're here but it also does feel like college was kind of a long time ago but at the same time not it's like this weird I don't know I just like can't believe we're 29 20 scary that is so wild so wild so that he blasted in your face. Yeah, he's trying to do something cute. (laughs) Yes. Um, So anyways, I'm glad we both had great weekends. We have so much to look forward to. Um, So I would be curious. You guys can comment on YouTube or wherever. Are you decorating for Christmas? Are you a 
post Thanksgiving? Like, where do you fall on setting up for Christmas? I feel like I saw a lot of Christmas trees on my Instagram this weekend. Me too. Everyone, I feel like I'm the only person in the world that hasn't decorated for <laughs> Christmas yet. And I just, I'm standing my ground. Um, but yeah, let us know if you're like rose decor right now, or if you're like me and you still have your fall up because it is still fall, even though I did get the, um, sugar cookie latte from Starbucks over the weekend with extra Same. sprinkles. It's so good. You're battling. She's half what she half wants to dive in, but half doesn't want to, but I, I do know. think if it wasn't for the hosting, you would have gave in. I think I, if I hadn't gave in already, probably like this weekend or next week, but nonetheless, Nonetheless, I told Riley, I'm like, if you need any inspo to get in the mood, just head over to your local Target. The Christmas music, the smells, the decor. Oh my gosh. I had to like turn my head because I, (laughs) why would I buy stuff that like, I don't even know what's going to work in our space, which I was curious for you. That'll be fun for you to kind of learn what you need and how you can grow your collection over the next few years to match your new home. Because it really decor like that, obviously the tree works anywhere, but sometimes it's like, if you don't have a mantle again, then all that doesn't work. Like you have to kind of get decor that works for your space. I know it's crazy too. Like I feel like every year I pull out my Christmas decor and I'm like, I forgot I had this. I forgot I had that. Like it's so fun. And Mm -hmm. then once this is what I mean, like once you get it all together, you kind of like, you don't like something here, you're switching it up. It takes like a couple weeks to really get it exactly the way you want it. Totally agree. Um, well, we can continue to share our Christmas de- decorating journey, our themes. I, I feel like I like talking about Christmas so I could sit here and chat about Christmas themes and decor, mm-hmm. but we have a lot of things to chat about. Before we get into what's in our cart, I do think it's appropriate for us to just talk about... It's hard to even say his name, <laughs> but you know who. <laughs> it starts with Z, second name B, <laughs> Zach Bryan. I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. I I do have to say before we chat about it, I have only watched and heard snippets of what's posted on social media, what my friends have said. I haven't physically watched the podcast, which I feel like you learn even more. But even from the tidbits in the SparkNote version, I am baffled. He is going down like I just feel like this was so bad for his image. And honestly, he got what he deserved. You can't be a bad person and treat women like that and think Mm -hmm. you're just paying your way out for all these horrible, horrible things. And like all of the mental games he played with them. And like, that is mental abuse. So I'm very proud of Brianna chicken fry. And I just have to say, like, I already got Zach Brian and Zach Brown band confused and then throwing her last name chicken fry. Yeah. Little you know, bit of chicken, chicken fry. fry. <laughs> so it's just like all around so confusing. But I just, every single thing I see is sh- like, I'm shocked. I know. I, the way he had, his team had this system in place, like ready to just like go back and forth and pay her. And apparently this has happened with his exes. And that's why it's all been so hush hush about his past relationships. I'm just like, just be a good person. Like, why don't we, why don't we just change who you are versus having these like payout systems in place? It is crazy. And of course I'm so proud of her for choosing to like not have this paycheck associated with everything she can do with it associated to him. But that's a lot easier said than done. Like that is a lot of money. (laughs) It's a lot of money, but knowing the way that their relationship was or like how he mm-hmm. treated her, he would probably hold it over her head in some way or another where like if she 100%. was spending the money or I don't know, I feel like it just, it felt icky. Like taking, yes. I'm sure she felt like it was such a tough decision, but in the long run, I think this was the better one. Oh, for sure. She even made a comment that I saw and she was saying, oh, so what, I can go buy a house and then think about him every day that he's basically the reason I have this house or that he can hold that over me to your point. Anything I'm doing or my success or my worth and who I am as a person is thanks to him. And I totally think she's super successful on her own before him. She will Mm -hmm. be after him. And the other comment I wanted to make is... Love or hate Dave Portnoy. I know he has like mixed... People have mixed opinions about him. 
he rides or dies for his people. I just mm-hmm. respect how much him and is it Bryce or Josh? The other, I think it, I don't know. I think it's Josh. The two guys that have been doing the diss tracks and that they do the podcast with. It is so sweet how much they kind of have in, engulfed her as like the sister and they take so much care of her. They're standing up for her. Yeah. And you know, Dave's not afraid of anyone and he has just as much, he has more money than Zach Bryan. So he's like, the money doesn't even phase him. You know, like he bought out her Bronco or whatever. Like Zach Bryan, why are you doing like forcing her to pay out this and that? Like, it's just such a messy, horrible I liked, I thought I liked Zach Bryan too. I thought he had a cool yeah. vibe. I thought his concerts were so cool and authentic and they seemed like they had such a great relationship. It's so wild how deceiving it can be. Isn't that crazy? Like they were so cute together and like that just goes to show you really never know what's going on behind the scenes and Instagram is just a highlight reel. And yeah, I thought Zach Bryan was like the coolest guy, very down to earth. And it turns out he's literally this monster paying people to stay quiet. I saw this TikTok of this guy that was like, I photographed Zach Bryan's wedding in 2020. I also think about that 2020. Like I thought that was years and years and years ago. He was married. Yeah. And he was like, we came, we became very close after the wedding. We hung out at each other's houses and then he like blocked me and all this stuff. And he was like, let's just say I knew he was crazy before all of you did. Like, I feel like there are probably so many people out there that are just staying quiet about this Mm -hmm. psychotic man. (laughs) Psychotic. And yeah, I think more stuff's going to, I really do think this is going to affect his image and maybe like likeness. I'm sure there's some people obviously that will still support him, but I I do think she's made a big enough impact that mm-hmm. it's going to tarnish him a little. Yeah. I mean, knowing his true colors, like, it's just, it's hard to listen to his music and even one to her, like, I didn't follow him on Instagram, but I probably would have unfollowed him too. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so anyways, justice for Brie and... We may never speak of ZB's name. Also, Truly's agreeing for sure. <laughs> Sorry, I think someone's here. That's okay. I love she's standing up for Brie. <laughs> she said, me too, Brie. I'm here for you. <laughs> um, do you need to go see if everything's okay or are you okay? No, Kate's down there. Oh, okay. I'm perfect. sorry. Yeah. No, it's totally fine. Um, girls stick together. Gr- Truly's a girl's girl. Oh my gosh. Truly is totally 100% a girl's girl. Absolutely. Um, so justice will be served, but I'm ready to get into what's in our cart if you want to kick us off. Okay. I do want to kick us off because I have a couple of things. One of them you're going to be very proud of me for. I'll save it to, for last. Okay. The first thing is I needed to restock on my Elemis cleansing balm. Do you use it too? No, but I just hear amazing things. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so I love it. I love mm-hmm. that cleansing balm. I've used other ones. This one is my favorite. However, I went to restock at Ulta this past weekend and I couldn't bring myself to buy it. It is so expensive. And I had one of those moments where I like stepped back and I was like, do I really need to spend $70 on a cleansing balm? 70. I'm pretty sure it's like 69. So I ended up going with this other one that's still a little pricey. It's $30, but like better than 70. Mm-hmm. from the brand Truly. <laughs> Funny, Truly, yes. like my dog. You must have been tr- uh, pull, like drawn toward it because I of True. I was totally drawn. Also because the title, like what it's called is Glass Skin. I was like, well, Ooh. I want Glass Skin. It's a cleansing balm and I've only used it one time, but I didn't break out. And I Great. like the, f- like, it's hard to explain. It's like a good texture. And so I'm going to link it because I would recommend and for a cheaper price point, why not? Absolutely. Is it clean? Do you know? Um, I, that I don't know. I do know that it has our favorite oil in it. Do you know oh, what that is? Oil. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. I'm <laughs> Elemis is obviously like a luxury, like higher mm-hmm. end brand. But when you were saying you couldn't come to buy, like get yourself to buy it, I thought you were going to say because it was like very unclean or something. Which I don't know if Elemis is a clean brand or not. Um, but you can literally get two Trulies for one Elemis, which is right. great. 
like, I'm not in a place to be spending $70. Like I need to be real with myself and live. What do they say? Live within your means. Within so your means, yeah. I'm a truly girl from here on out, <laughs> unless I like turn to hate it. But I, right. so far I like it. And it didn't, if a product doesn't agree with me, I will break out like immediately next morning. And yeah. I did it. That's amazing. So the other thing I want to get for maybe my little get together for Thanksgiving, have you seen those candlesticks with bows on them? I sure have. I you want need. them. You should feel get like them. I, I feel like I should. It's so funny that you mentioned these candlesticks because when you were talking about your tablescape, I was going to say you have to line it with candlesticks. Like that just sets, even if you have a few things and it's not this like grandiose candlesticks, totally tie it together. So a hundred percent. Yes. Yeah, I feel like it totally sets the vibe. So I've seen them at Target, gonna look at Home Goods. We'll keep you guys updated. But the last thing is what I was exci- excited to tell you about. Okay. I am on my clean product journey and I switched to a clean toothpaste. <gasps> Do you use clean? I think I use like a semi clean. I'm not sure if it's perfect, but it's from Whole Foods. I forget what it's called, Smile or something. Well, actually, now that you say that, I don't know if mine's definitely like perfect clean, but it's definitely better than Crest. Right. Absolutely. Um, it's called Boca. Oh, I've heard great things about Boca. Yay. Amazing. Have you tried it yet? I've tried it and I like don't even see a difference. Like I thought maybe it would taste bad or it would feel mm-hmm. like gritty. It's amazing. It's so minty. I'll Ooh. link the flavor I got because there's different ones, but I don't think I'll ever go back. I mean, it's great. I love that. Okay. When I run out, I just bought like a three pack of the current one I have, but I want to try that because I have seen really good things about that brand. Yay. I'm glad I chose a good one. Um, Okay. So I, wait, was that your end of your cart? Yeah. No, tell me what's in yours. Okay. So this was just fitting because I've been wanting to share this for so long. So after I told Riley that I was expecting on the pod, A few days later, Summer Friday's Belly Bomb shows up or it's like, it has such a cute name. I think I'm forgetting. I think it's like Belly Bomb, like Baby Moon or something. It's so cute. You guys know I'm such a Summer Friday stan and it shows up at my door. I'm like, who sent this? And of course it was Riley. Riley, it is so good. Yeah, I'm obsessed with it. I use it every single day after the shower and it's so Obviously, it's just like a belly bomb for those listening. So only um, select people will relate to that in what's in our cart. But anything Summer Fridays is just a luxurious experience. It's clean. It's quality. I just feel like I'm really taking care of myself when I lather it on. I actually put it on my belly. And then I also put it like on my sides because I don't know where I'm growing everywhere. (laughs) (laughs) So I love it. So thank you so much for getting that for me. Of course. It's so good. Um, So that's the first thing. The second thing is last week, I talked about wanting this set that I'm wearing right now. So if you're watching on YouTube, I'm wearing one of the two-piece sets from Amazon that I chatted about. You can't really see it too well, but it's just a really nice two-piece set. I would call it a Skims dupe. And this one's like a, what would you call this? Like a Heather Gray? Yes. Heather Gray, but they have tons of colors. I'm obsessed with it. I got it in a bigger size so I can grow with it, but it's perfect. It You can wear them separate. You can wear it together. I think it's a perfect piece for no matter where you live and just a great thing to have in your closet. You know, those certain pieces you just gravitate towards. Mm-hmm. This is going to be one of them for me. Love it. Love it. Love it. So I'm going to link it. I know I linked it last week, but I feel like now I have something to show for it. It's you know? so cute on you too. Thank you. Shout out to Blaine for showing us it. Um, And then speaking of bow candles, when I was at Target grabbing the towel and bows for my tree and stuff, they have, we have to get it. I think it was $5 and I almost grabbed them, but I wanted to talk to you and tell you about it. And obviously the Duke crew, they have these darling cups, just like the Anthro ones but they're rimmed in gold and it's this big striped red bow on it. Just like a big, so, it's, it, it's so cute, right? We need it. it. Would, and it would be so cute to sit out with like Christmas decor and just like on your bar cart even year round. And I was like, Riley needs this. We need this because it would just fit too with the Ducro. It's right off. 
Also for $5, like we can spare, right? It's so cheap. So I'm going to link it. And I think when I link it, I'm going to grab it and you need to grab one too. So we can have it for like the holiday season. We can make our uh, sip and or yeah, our what's in our cup with our bow cups. Perfect. I'll click your link. (sighs) Okay. So yeah, that's my cart and that's it. Okay. Yay. I'm so excited to get into this episode. It's going to be so much fun hearing about all things pregnancy from Rose. I am so excited to chit chat with her as well. So let's get into it. We asked you guys on our Instagram, some questions curated specifically for Rose and her pregnancy journey. So let's go. First one, how did you find out and how did you tell Ryan? Okay. Before I get into it, I also just wanted to say this to the do crew, whoever's listening. Um, I want to be as like authentic and genuine as possible because I feel like I share my most like truthful self on the podcast, but I know pregnancy and announcement and fertility is such a sensitive subject. And so I understand if this episode is not for you and if you have to turn it off, like no harm in that. And I just want to say like both Riley and I like we're praying and love you and like are thinking of you in whatever journey you are, whatever that looks like. So I just want to preface that because sometimes it's hard to share and be truthful and not feel guilty or I don't know. I just want to be, what's the word? Like understanding of everyone and where they're at, because I know it's not that for everyone. No, that was so beautifully said. Thanks. I'm like a little out of breath. (laughs) I think I'm, I think I'm getting out of breath because I'm like getting excited. Um, okay. So you said, how did I find out and how did I tell Ryan? Yes. Okay. So how I found out is (laughs) I took the test with Ryan. So that's how he found out. We took the test together. And the reason we took it together is I am extremely regular with my period and my aura ring. Like if you have an aura ring, it basically will tell you when you're about to get your period, it'll tell you like to the day. And mine is always a day, maybe a day off. And when it was a day off, I just was like, this is weird. I didn't have really any inkling. This might be a question if I had like signs. I didn't really have any inkling. Um, Obviously, I'm I'm having a hard time answering this without answering other questions. So maybe some questions will get answered while I'm yeah, that's, answering this. I can this. think of a million more. So don't worry about that. <laughs> okay. Um, we weren't really trying. Uh, it's so funny. Everyone likes to joke because I was so adamant about like getting, let Ryan and I get into our house and then maybe, but I still, I really wanted to go to Europe in the spring, <laughs> which is so funny because we were supposed to go for our two year, then this whole Florida move and building a house like that just like was not realistic for us. So we're like, okay, no worries. We'll get into our house and maybe we'll start trying then or like just not, not trying, but then hopefully we can go to Europe in like maybe April or May when the weather's good again. And then maybe from there, it'll be more serious. Well, that's not what God's plan was. And I'm so grateful for it because normally Ryan and I, are safe. This is so weird (laughs) to talk about. Um, but we just like one month we're like, you know, the odds of it happening are very slim. Why not? Like if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. Um, and I guess it was meant to be. And so I'm feeling like, I feel very, very, very fortunate to say that. So I know again, that that's not everyone's story. So when I was off a couple of days, Ryan and I were like, okay, like, let's just take a test and see like, is this real or not? We were in disbelief. We took four tests cause it came in like a pack. And then the next day I woke up, worked out and got another pack at the store and they were all obviously positive. And Ryan's like, okay, stop spending money on tests. Like it's clearly such a financial person. He was like, cause they're not cheap. Pregnancy tests are expensive, right? Really? Yeah. I mean, not like really, but I just was kind of shocked. more than you would think. Yeah. And the one, like the first one we took was just like the cross, like the blue cross. And then, or whatever, I forget, two lines or something. And then the last one we did when we were taking them together is the one that like loads and says yes or no. That one I felt like took like 85 years. And when that said yes, I was like, whoa, okay, this is, this is happening. 
So just so the Jew crew and me are understanding this correctly, you were literally one day late for your period. And then you found out. So how many days? Oh my gosh, along? I was so early. It feels like I've been pregnant for like I've known for an eternity because I I guess it's just hard for me to grasp, but some people could go weeks and just not know. But I guess mm-hmm. if you don't have an aura ring and you feel fine, mm-hmm. for me, I'm just so regular to my period that like it was like I, we were not safe and I was late. So it was just like, okay, well, I might as well figure out if I am or not. Yeah. And, and you're so in tune with your body. I feel like if you didn't find out at that point, you would have known something like you would have probably tested anyways further yes. down. Yes, exactly. Um, but it is interesting because I did know so early Mm -hmm. and I think that's a good thing, but also it can make it feel longer. And there's like, you get in your head a little bit more because it's so early. I don't, I'm trying to think technically I was, I don't even know, maybe like four weeks or something, three or four weeks. I forget like when you find out what that technically starts at, I think it's three or four. So very early. (laughs) So crazy. Yeah. Very. Okay. So the next one is where you're trying. You kind of already answered that. Yeah. Um, Next one. How did you know you were ready? Okay. This is tough because I think you, I, I don't know if you ever feel, well, everyone's story and experience is different. Mm -hmm. I think the thought of having kids and being in that phase of life, like being around my siblings or my girlfriends that have babies, it didn't scare me anymore. Like I wasn't around them and being like, whoa, like this is going to totally change my life. And it like frightened me. It was more like, I cannot wait to be engulfed Mm -hmm. in that. And I was not always that way. I knew I always wanted children, but I sometimes when I was around people who had kids, I'm like, dang, this is intense. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think going off of that, I think Ryan and I both felt like, obviously there's always more things that him and I could experience together on our own, but I feel very content with like what we've gotten to do and travel and see Mm -hmm. as a couple, just us two. And I feel like we both were just kind of, it's scary because I didn't necessarily feel like oh, I'm so, like I'm so equipped to be a mom like I'm so ready and prepared it wasn't that at all I still don't feel equipped and prepared but I felt like I was ready for like unlocking that new version where like there's just so much more to life on the other side um and I guess maybe that was how we knew like of course when we decided to not not try it was like, okay, well, if this is meant to be and like God wants to bless us with this, like I feel prepared now that God blessed us with that miracle. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, that makes total sense. Yeah. I, I love this that I'm answering these, but I feel like the whole episode is just going to be me chat chatting. Rose, we're eating it up. This is what we want to (laughs) hear. Okay. Another question. When are you due? I know I didn't say when I was due. Um, I don't want to share like my exact date just because you don't I, don't have want, to. I don't want people to be like, Oh, like how many days past are you? Are you going to do yeah. the X, Y, and Z? But we are due in April. So I'm coming up close. Um, like I'm, I'm nearing halfway. That is so crazy. I have to say, this is how my brain works, which I think yours works like this too. <laughs> okay. For work, um, I do a lot of things that I have to like input certain dates for. And anytime there's something like around the April timeframe, I'm like, oh, Rose, have her baby by then. Or, oh, we'll be getting close to the due date. It's like, that's how I think now. Like, I always think like that. Or if I buy something and the expiration date is like later, I'm like, whoa, like, oh, <laughs> it'll be like, I'll be... I don't know. Not always like for pregnancy, but if it's like around my birthday or I'm like, oh, wow, this will happen by then. So it's so funny you do that. And I love that you think of it on your calendar too. (laughs) Yeah. Like it's crazy the way our brains work, but so excited for April 2025. It's going to be such a good year. It's crazy. I feel like all of a sudden it's just time feels like it's flying. I have like the distraction with the house and obviously like there's so much to do. And maybe this is a question, but it's like everything's so brand new moving to Florida. It's like, 
I don't have a bunch of friends to be like, who's your doctor? And I had to like, I've been switching insurance and all of that's been totally, um, I can't think of the right word, like in, encompassing. It's mm-hmm. been a lot figuring out like just all the care and appointments and insurance. And so I feel like that has consumed me. And then I'm like, oh my goodness, like I can announce now. I know there's not a right or wrong time to announce, but like then we announced and then I'm like, we're going to move into our house. And then holy crap, it's going to be the new year. And I feel like three, four months goes by like that. Also, the holidays just make everything go by so much faster. So yeah, I feel like once we hit January, it's going to be like, whoa, we're all, we're so close. Right? That's like scary. Like it's been nice because I've had the house as a distraction, but I'm ready to get into the house because mm-hmm. I want to just like feel settled and like nesting is like a type A girl's dream. Mm-hmm. I feel like I nest, I've nested my whole life. <laughs> you <laughs> you spent your whole life preparing for this. <laughs> yeah. So I'm excited to get in there and then really like focus in and Ryan knows type A is like my love language. So we have like a checklist of kind of like different things that we should do or research or what's next, what's urgent. Because if not, it's like extremely overwhelming, obviously yeah. in a great way. Like this is in no way, shape or form. Like complaining whatsoever. It's just, you don't think about that stuff until you're like, whoa, this is real. I got to figure all this out. Right. Wow. I love hearing (laughs) all of this. Riley already knows all of this. No, I feel like I'm hearing details that (laughs) like I've been dying to ask you. So I know the answer to the next question, but do you know the gender? Oh, do you want to tell them? No, you tell them. Okay. I just feel so weird that Riley's not talking. Um, we are not finding out the gender. Everyone thinks we're loons. I told you. I said that <laughs> shocks me. I said type A girl gone wild. <laughs> gone rogue. Everyone help. Like literally that's the last thing I thought you would say or do. But hearing your reasoning behind it, just like I, it makes me so happy and excited for you guys. Do you want to share more or keep it at that? Sure. I'll share more. Um, I th- And again... I think there may be like a time or like a certain child where finding out the gender would be fun too. I think experiencing both. um, I think for the first, this is all again, personal preference. I think everyone should do exactly what is right for them. But for the first, like Ryan and I both dream of having a boy and a girl. Like we want both genders. We want multiple kids. So I really could care less like what we have first. And I think having an extra incentive at the end of labor and like Ryan being able to be the person to have the role of figuring out like who is there and like tell me who the baby is at the end, I feel like will be so, so special and give him like a certain responsibility and role that I think is nice for the father and I just think that would like, will incentivize me so much during like the hard parts of labor. I love that so much. And I think that is such a good reason. And like you said, no matter what, like you can do whatever you want to do. Like it's all up to personal preference if you want to find out or not. Um, And I was thinking this too, like your style is already so like aesthetically neutral. Like, oh. So I think that no matter what, you probably would have got some neutral things anyways. And so it really doesn't. Whereas for me, I probably would want to find out because I wouldn't buy like everything pink or, you know, so I think I, and I totally get that. I think there's, it's almost like a first look in a wedding. Like there are pros and cons to both. So it's funny you say that about gender neutral, because I definitely think the bases like crib glider, Obviously, like I want that to be neutral just because I want to be able to use it child to child for, you know, practicality. However, the the, because a lot of people's question is like, well, how are you going to like get your nursery ready? And I'm like, the plan is, is like to just get the core pieces. And then once we meet them and know who they are, then like do the wallpaper, paint and like get pillows and accents that are girl or boy. Because... Of course, like I said, the bases and like bones of the nursery will be gender neutral and I'll probably mm-hmm. get 
some gender neutral, like green, yellow, white, cream, like onesies and stuff. So I can use it child to child regardless. But I do think whenever I know who they are, I'm going to go rogue on blue (laughs) or pink because I like, I think it's just so fun. Like once you know who they are, you want to buy, like, I have to say, obviously girly stuff is so, so enticing to buy because Mm -hmm. their stuff is just, it's so much easier to get the cutest stuff for girls. Um, so I know for a fact, once we know who they are, the nursery and the clothes are going pink or blue for sure. For sure. Have you had any gender dreams? Okay. So it's so crazy because early, very early, like probably, I don't know. I don't even know when I had a vague dream and thank goodness I woke up right away and told Ryan because I literally forget it now, which is why I'm like, was that a dream or like, was that real or did I make it up? But in that dream, it was a boy. They do say gender dreams are usually right. Okay. So I'm kind of waiting. I'm hoping I have a more vivid one now that I'm further along, but I don't know if that's fictitious of me to like think I get another chance. I don't know. I go back and forth like certain times. I'm like, it's definitely going to be a girl or it's definitely going to be a boy. Um, I currently, as of this week, feel like it's a boy, but I literally have no clue. I have nothing to base it off of. And of course, the wives and witches tales are so fun to say and do. But I have personal friends that have bipolar experiences and have, have had both genders. So I think they're obviously like tales for a reason. Mm -hmm. And you felt pretty good, right? Yeah. I have never really gotten sick. I just have had like some nausea and some food aversions. I'd say my biggest symptom is just like the first trimester. I was extremely tired. Like if I would work out, I would just like be exhausted and just like Another thing, it's what's the phase of your period when you like have no motivation for anything? I think luteal? it's luteal. Well, I felt like I was forever in my luteal. Like I had no motivation, like to do lists, being productive, doing something out of the bare minimum. Forget it. I was like, I just want to lay here. I just like, it was so strange. Cause again, that's really not how you and I operate. No, we, I'm getting PTSD from when we had the, we did the episode about periods and I didn't know you were pregnant yet. And you knew, uh-huh. and I was like, Rose, what phase of your period are you in? And you were like, uh, follicular, <laughs> follicular. I, I panicked. And I was like, I, whenever it, it, um, released, I asked like Ryan's sister, I was like, is it obvious? Like, does, is she going to know? Because I didn't want, I didn't want that to be like the way you found out. Um, but yeah, um, no more cycle sinking for me. We'll try next, uh, next year. <laughs> I'll try it next year. Okay. So this kind of goes into the next question. It's how do you feel and what are your symptoms? Well, basically the same. I I feel, and now I have more energy, which is nice. And I feel like I have a little bit more motivation for stuff. Um, Some days I'm tired. Some days I, it's so funny. I'll be like snapping Riley and our friend Blaine and just like out of the blue, I'll just start gagging. (laughs) I'll say one weird, really, really weird thing is I hate coffee. That is so sad for you. It's quite devastating. Although I did get a sugar cookie latte today, half sweet and hot at Starbucks, which it's so funny because it's like, if you know me, I like really didn't care for Starbucks. I would get like the holiday once Mm -hmm. or twice and I'm like, okay, yeah, that actually doesn't sound bad. But some of my like iced coffee and like local spots, like, oh, I have Brad, I could gag right now. (laughs) I wonder what it is. We don't have to keep talking about it because I know it really does trigger you, but that's just like such a random thing. It's so random, especially for a girl who like loves coffee. Yeah. And like it's, I'd say three things that come to mind. Well, seafood has been hard. Like I haven't had seafood just more so. I don't know why. It just doesn't sound good texture wise, Mm -hmm. but really coffee sausage, which is strange. Um, and like everything pumpkin, 
which is sad. That really hurts me for you. I know. I, I'll, I'll have moments girl. where I can have it, but like, I don't know the thought of it. I'm just like, eh, no, no, no. And it's so strange because it's things that I love. So everyone who's been pregnant has told me the coffee will come back. So again, I had a latte today, which is a big move for me. Maybe it's slowly starting to come back. That's what I'm hoping. Like, that's not very nice. I know. That's literally so rude. (laughs) It's so rude. So I think you might have already answered this one too, but were there any other symptoms that you, that gave you an idea that you were maybe pregnant? No, not really. Um, I think it's easy when you're in that like waiting phase, if you like knew you like tried or, you know, whatever the case may be to be like, Oh, this is different. Or, <laughs> yeah. or, or like you think, are you psyching yourself out? Or yes. is it yeah. like, oh, is this, am I peeing more? Or like, yeah. you know, whatever. Are my boobs getting bigger? Um, which I don't, I really didn't have anything really. Um, it, it just, no, nope, boring. So was your heart literally beating out oh, of your chest? Your heart saying, your heart, my heart, uh, my body temperature was through the roof on my aura ring. So that was like that an was idea. the only thing that made me think to test because my our girlfriend said her her body temperature was through the roof, and eventually the aura ring told her like take a pregnancy test. And all I knew is like your body temperature rises, you know, it rises and then it drops when you get your period. And so mine just kept going up, 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 up forever, like for so long. It's finally like, not like high as high anymore. Um, like some days it'll be high, but I mean, like days before I was supposed to get my period, it was like way higher than it had ever been. So when you say like high, like hundreds or is no, that's like fever. Uh, no. Yeah. Not that much. I'm saying so high as in like the little chart on the aura ring. Um, oh. Like it takes your temperature every morning when you wake up. And so I have like a baseline that it knows Mm -hmm. me at. And so it was just like really high on the chart. But I don't, I think it was probably like 98 maybe. That's crazy. I'm actually not sure the exact number. So no one quote me on that, but it was for my, for the graph. It was high. And I'm sure everyone's very, very different in their own baseline temperature. For sure. But that was the only thing leading up to being late for my period that I was like, Oh my gosh. Cause that had never happened to me before. And like you said, I'm very in tune and things are very normal. So like that was out of the ordinary. So what I was starting to say is, was your heart literally beating out of your chest when you were taking the first pregnancy test? Like what was going through your mind? You have to wait what three minutes or something. Yeah. And so Ryan and I like recorded it and I'll I'll probably put it out there. It's just like such a long video because we're like, just like going back and forth, like hugging each other, like, oh my gosh, like this is meant to be, like it'll be, you know, like let's just figure it out. And time moved so slow. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know, like it's hard. I almost, it was like an out-of-body experience. Like it really wasn't what I thought I would feel when I turned it around because I was more just like, whoa like of yeah. course like you dream for that moment like your whole life if you want to be a mom and I'm like is this really happening <laughs> like I could I drew re- I really couldn't believe it I'm, I mean I'm still coming to terms with it and we're months later from that but it's a surreal experience and so it was cool to have Ryan next to me for it because I could like process with him versus like holding it in and being like mm-hmm. uh, waiting till we got home eight hours later. You know what I mean? Like we had already decided like when, if like we were going to take a test, like l- do it. Like he was like, don't take it without me. Like I want to be there for it. So we like kind of had chosen that together. That's so special. And I love that you did that. Was it like a, a weekday? So you had to wait till after work. Oh, it, yeah, it was a weekday. And mind oh you, gosh. let's not all forget, I live with Ryan's parents <laughs> right now. And we, after we found out, we had to go downstairs and like have dinner and just act like our whole life didn't just change. 
No, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. I forgot about like we, the dynamic of you having to be around them for because you don't want to tell them right away. Right, right. And we ended up telling them like earlier than I probably would have had our circumstances not been different. But I started telling people like friends and family like close to us, obviously, like regardless if something were to happen or not. And, you know, I never, you never know, like, mm -hmm. but especially at the beginning, because regardless, I would want them praying for us and yeah. like being our support system. So that's kind of, I was like, people were moving and going out of town. And so I was like, I'd rather tell them in person, even if it's a little bit earlier than mm -hmm. like, quote unquote, what you would think you want to do. Right. No. And I'm sure you're happy with that decision yeah. is telling people just like the best feeling in the world. It is the best feeling. It's like, I get so nervous before. I can't wait for you guys to see Riley's reaction. It's the best video ever. Um, and you'll see in the video, but like it's taking her forever, especially from my end to open the box because like she said, there was a glass and a bottle in it. So of course I was so psycho about wrapping it and like making sure it wasn't going to break. Can you imagine this big moment? And then you open it and it's broke. So I say all that, like the buildup of telling people your like heart is beating out of your chest, but it's, it's, I, we feel really, really loved, which is so cool. And I feel like this baby is, has so many people praying for them, but it's so wild, right? Like it just still, like when I'm telling people, I'm still like, yeah. Like I'm a chalk too. <laughs> like I don't, <laughs> I, I don't, it doesn't feel real. Like it's kind of hard. Like now that I'm finally, I feel like starting to get like a little bump and like feeling some of the, like, I finally feel like pregnant, like look wise. Mm -hmm. I know I'll joke about that when I'm have a huge bump and be like, LOL. Um, but it's such a weird thing. Like I thought it would I kind of thought it would be different how I would feel because I'm still coming to terms with it. Yeah. Like in a good way. It's just like, yeah. I'm like, is this real? Cause you also like are feeling somewhat normal. Yeah. So maybe like, I don't know, but it's like, sometimes you forget. Yes. Like, oh yeah. There's okay. someone in there. Yes, absolutely. And to add to that, um, just so you guys know, every hurricane that happened, I've been pregnant for. Thank you. Like, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. The storage unit drama, pregnant, the, <laughs> um, the hurricanes, just like so many different things have happened. Rin's whole incident, like it really makes you forget really quick because mm -hmm. I, I, I totally understand what people say. Like once you have a child and are pregnant again, it's like so different because mm -hmm. it's not like you're not like in, in engulfed with this child in your belly, but I'm trying to soak it in. But yes, to your point, I think it would be a totally different experience if I went through hell the first trimester. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's like, yeah. oh yeah, I'm, I'm, this is real because I feel like death. And right. I'm very lucky to say that wasn't my experience. I'm so glad it wasn't. <sighs> Me too. So this is the last one. Okay. What's one thing that you didn't expect before being pregnant? Oh, okay. Um... Well, I guess I expected it, but your boobs grow so much. Did you have to it's, get a new bra? Yeah. Remember? And I got... Wait, is that why you got the wake hole? Yeah. Oh my God. I didn't so even I was put busting. that together. I was just going to say, you just got the new wake hole one. Yep. Wake hole, t-shirt bra, this t-shirt bra, best thing ever because these girls are growing. <laughs> um, I would say like the be like how tired you are is hard to put into words it's like a different tired mm -hmm. it's like no like I'm so tired I don't even know how to explain it um and maybe just like I didn't realize you couldn't sleep on your back I thought you just couldn't sleep on your stomach I still find myself sleeping on my back and this may be controversial some people are like no laying on your back whatsoever. Some people say like your body will wake you up if, mm -hmm. or you can do it until this many weeks or whatever. My body just, I thought I was like, ah, oh, when I get pregnant one day, it's great because I sleep on my back. And of course that's the safest, like you're on your back. Right. But I can imagine as the weeks come, I'm going to, it's going to continue to get more difficult to get comfortable when sleeping because 
sleeping on my sides is so unnatural for me. And so I'm just like twisting and turning throughout the night and it's like uncomfortable now. I can't imagine. Yeah. So maybe that. Are you going to get a pregnancy pillow? Oh my gosh. I actually just got one. What? Yes. You need to put I, it in your cart and link it for anyone else. I will. I will. I'm going to do an unboxing this week because the company <gasps> sent me it. A, that's amazing. Yes. Yeah, so oh I'm God. excited. I hope it changes the game for me. Um, and I will link it. I, I hope it helps a lot. Just like laying and they say that the pregnancy pillow, oops, excuse me. <laughs> um, they say like after being pregnant, you can like wear it kind of like in a U and it can be good for like breastfeeding. Wait, pregnancy pill? Like, why are they just for pregnancy? I want one now. They right? look like the comfiest things ever. I know. I hope I love it. And I hope it makes a difference because I I just love being on my back. <laughs> Even if I could just prop it up on my yeah. back. Like, sometimes I'll put a pillow just so I'm not flat to the ground. I don't know. There's so much to research. There's Im- information overload. And you have to be careful, like, in my, like, th- in my opinion, like, be careful, like, who who you're getting your info from and like, you know, everyone can post wherever they want and like what it works for you, but you want like credible sources of what you can and can't do. You know what I mean? Right. I feel like that is a very hard thing, especially in today's social media world, just because there's so much information. There's videos, there's photos. Like I'm thinking of TikTok. There's like pregnancy. TikTok is probably blowing up your phone. Like who do you, who is credible? Exactly. That's what is a struggle for me. So I kind of have to try and limit like what I intake because I feel like I need to like trust who my doctor or like care is and Mm -hmm. certain books and online research. Obviously you can watch it, but it can be a slippery slope. Mm -hmm. Well, is there anything else that you want to get off your chest now that we have you? (laughs) No, I feel like I answered every possible question that people could have. Um, like very thoroughly, obviously more thorough than if I were to like sit and try and like answer them on Instagram. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, this was so much fun. I Yay. really enjoyed it. I just realized something by the way. What? I forgot to turn on my lights today. <laughs> I'm really sad. I right, didn't even notice. I was so excited for the episode that I just didn't turn on my she lights. I'm sorry, so guys. excited. You know what's so funny? Your outfit, like I love your um, this is such a squirrel moment, but you have that cute like uh fur on the end. Oh yeah. And if you look really quickly, it looks like your headphones are earmuffs, like you're on like a winter <laughs> wonderland. <laughs> ready for Christmas, guys. It's a little chilly in here. She's ready for Christmas. She just won't admit it, you guys. Um, but it's okay. I'm holding down the fort with red. Yeah, I'm really sorry that I forgot to turn on my lights. Hopefully you guys didn't notice either. But let's get into girls' room. We have two submissions today, and the Duke crew needs our help. Okay, first one. Hi, girls. I love the pod. Rose, how has it been living with your in-laws while your house has been being built? Was it worth it? I am going through a similar situation, and I can't see an end in sight. Also, Mm. it has been hard for my husband and I to be intimate since his parents are both always home. Thanks, XOXO. Aw, this is a good question. I'd say 100% worth it because short-term sacrifice for very long-term reward. Um, Obviously, everyone's situations are different, but we are moving like to a much more expensive living situation. And so like kind of what Riley was saying earlier, like something's got to give. Like I, like we don't come from like we don't live that how some people live on TikTok at this age in our life. And as much as we wish that it could all be easy and we could always get everything we wanted, that's just not the reality. Um, so it's obviously hard in certain moments and certain days or weeks are tougher than others and not having like, I think the toughest thing, if I'm understanding this girl correctly, it's like, if you just had a close date and you can like count backwards, like, this is the date. And all I have to do is get to this date. Like it's such a timeline thing. I think type A and just girls in general, it's like you, you just need something at the end of the the tunnel. Um, and we've constantly had to push that back because our house is taking longer and longer. Um, but I know once we're in it and you like take a step back, like once we're in our house and through this, 
it'll be like, oh my gosh, that was, it wasn't that bad. Like it was just a season and great. Like I'm very grateful because it has been awesome. And we actually have like the entire upstairs, which would be very different if we just had a bedroom. Um, like we have like a loft and a bedroom and a bathroom and it's like upstairs and tucked away. So I hear you. I feel you. It will be so worth it. Like find ways to like get out of the house together. Maybe like if you're saving money here, maybe do like a cheap little weekend vacation or a staycation or go on more date nights because you're saving money in other ways. It will be worth it. And as far as like intimacy, I would just say like, if there's a will, there's a way like, (laughs) like maybe outside of the house. Like, I don't know exactly your situation, but I promise it'll be worth it. We're so close to being on the other side. Well, I hope you're so close. I know I am. I think it's amazing for this person to hear from you being on the end of your journey, say it is so worth it. I think that will give her a lot of, um, like, I guess motivation, just Mm -hmm. keep pushing through. Cause it can be hard when you don't have your own space. Yeah. And like, right. You could relate to it. Not necessarily in like living with in-laws, but like long distance, like it's always like, it's so hard in the moment, but once you're through it, you're like, okay, like it wasn't that bad. Yeah. And I would agree with what Rose said, the advice of just like having your closed date or a specific date, um, in mind, it helps you kind of count backwards and just like look forward to something. So keep us updated. Mm -hmm. Um, so exciting. You're, uh, building a house. I think that's so fun. So fun. Okay. Next one. What advice would you give to someone who wants to start posting content in hopes of being an influencer? I've been wanting to do it for several years now, but have been worried about what other people will think of my posts. I know I need to get out of my head, but I just don't know where to start. I look forward to the pod every week. Love you girlies. Thanks for the advice. Mm, I'll let you take the lead on this. I would say something very cliche. You just have to start and you just have to like post and not care what anyone thinks, which is easier said than done. Mm -hmm. But like, you're not going to care when you have a million followers and a million brand deals and you're making so much money, you can quit your corporate nine to five. Like you've got to start somewhere. And if you don't ever start, or if you're continually worried about what other people think, then it's never going to go anywhere. So you just, you have to do it. And I believe in you and like, Look at all of these people who have been so successful. Like you can do it too. Anyone can do it. I I think that was great advice. And remember, people are going to have their opinion about you regardless if you post mm-hmm. or you don't. And to Riley's point too, like, yeah, you may, people may think you're silly or make fun of you, but not. In, and then when it starts working, they're not going to. Um, you have to just be very convicted in why you're doing it and just start and you'll get more comfortable and confident doing it. Like even with us with the pod ride, like now we are just, we'll say anything that falls off our tongue. Wait, that's so true. I feel like when we first started, we were like so timid and just not really sure what to do. And now, I mean, I wouldn't say we're experts by any means, but we're definitely more comfortable. We've definitely have people who like enjoy listening. Absolutely. So you'll get more confident and the right people will support you and it will be so worth it. And if you don't try, you're always going to have that what if. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think that concludes our happy hour. Thank you guys so much for spending this time with us. It was so fun hearing from our girl, Rose. The Do Crew is growing. Mm -hmm. As always, feel free to share this podcast with your friends and family, anyone who might love it. Like us, subscribe, leave a review, follow. I forgot to mention too, I feel like we haven't said where you can submit your girls' room submissions in a while. So there's a link in our bio. It's a completely anonymous um, submission form. So mm-hmm. submit your girl's room advice or whatever it may be. And we are happy to read through it on the pod. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. We haven't done that in a while. Um, and I'm going to leave us with the cheers. I just want to thank everybody for giving me and my family and our growing family, growing do crew, um, so much love and support and prayers. It really does make a difference and it means the world. So Cheers to whatever journey you're on, but cheers and thanks for loving and supporting me and Rye and just the Do Crew. Um, we're so excited to take you along on this journey and just continue to share our lives with you guys. So we will see you same time, same place next week. We love you guys. Love you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>